and welcome back to another Haskell programming video with me, Jekor. Today, rather than deconstruct an existing Haskell program, I'd like to actually build one with you from scratch, completely from scratch. And rather than use a program that is from mathematics or chess or something I'd consider a bit of a toy problem, I'd like to build a real system, something that people could actually use and find useful. So I thought about this for a while, and you know, we could build a web application together, but that has a lot of parts that aren't really specific to Haskell. And it turns out that I've been working on a book for Haskell for a while and had written about 40 or 50 pages with an implementation of DJB's redo as a running example. And as I got through about two chapters of it, I realized that it would probably be better to see it as a video rather than trying to read and understand what's going on in a book. So I think this is going to be an opportunity to test that theory out and hopefully you can learn something from it or at least enjoy the process. I should start by explaining a little bit about what redo is. You're probably already familiar with make or some type of make or build system that is a set of rules that instructs the build program on what to do to build a project, for example. And Make has been around for quite a long time. There are some newer ones, um, SCONS, uh, CMake. I know that there are some for the Ruby world. And in fact, that's kind of the problem. It seems that every language, once it reaches a certain level of maturity, gets its own Make system. And, and Haskell's no exception. We have Cabal. The interesting thing about Redo is that it has the promise of being simpler and more universal. It's based on shell scripts, and I think a very appealing aspect of it is that the specification or the idea was created by DJB or DJ Bernstein, who also implemented QMail and Daemon Tools and a lot of other very well-designed, um, very focused, limited uh, programs that really, I think, embody the Unix philosophy. So we'll take a look at his specification. Uh, he didn't actually create an implementation himself, but there is one implementation in Python by a well-known blogger, and we can use that to test our implementation against. But I think it would actually be really interesting to see how Haskell stacks up against the Python implementation and it's, um, I think, a good example for building a Haskell application. I think it fits the, um, the domain of Haskell quite well. So let's take a look at DJB's page. And it's actually quite sparse. I don't know if I'm missing some of the information here. But the uh, main page I can see here, Rebuilding Target Files Atomically, explains some of the shortcomings of make such as what happens when something goes wrong in the middle of a build step. Uh, there are a few other pages talking about um, another problem with make is what happens when your rule changes, but you don't notice this, or make doesn't notice this, and doesn't rebuild the targets that are affected by that rule. And so there's some talk about how Redo fixes this, Redo handles this. And some other pages here that I'm not going to go through with you on video. In fact, I'm not going to worry about explaining too much of what Redo does up front. I think we can just go ahead and start prototyping it right now, and you'll get a feel for it as we go along. One thing that I should address before we get started is the prerequisites for these videos. Now, I'm calling the series Haskell from Scratch, but I'm not going to be covering the fundamentals or basics of Haskell like I would in a tutorial series. Instead, I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of the language and that you've written at least one small program in it so far. 
I don't expect you to fully understand monads or advanced type theory or anything like that. But if you haven't at least been through one of the uh, freely available books, there are some excellent ones uh, online, then I suggest you do that first before watching these videos. So let's start by creating a directory for the uh, project, redo. And normally I do a lot more of my work inside of Emacs, but I'm going to try to be uh, editor agnostic a little bit more than usual for the sake of these videos. So the simplest task I can think of is actually compiling a Haskell source file to a Haskell program using our implementation of redo. So let's assume that we have a working redo already and build a really simple Haskell program that does nothing. And to build this program, we're going to need a redo file which will call redo.do. All of our redo files will end in .do. And it's essentially a shell script that uh, says how to compile the program. So we have redo.hs. And we'll save that and run this for now and see how it works out for us. I'm using bash, um, but we're going to assume we just have a standard shell. So we will run redo.do. And we should end up with a working program that does nothing. And so here it is, redo. Okay, so now to prototype what redo is going to do, we can actually have the program just do exactly what we did uh, in the shell. So we'll switch to redo.hs. And we need some way of executing shell commands or system commands. So I'm going to go into GHCI. Let's actually go into the redo directory first and play around with it a little bit. Now, I happen to know already that there is a function called shell that we can use to execute shell commands. So let's take a look at the type of it. And GHCI is telling us that it's not in scope. It's actually part of system.process. And fortunately, newer versions of GHCI allow you to use import on the prompt just like you would inside of a Haskell source file. So system.process, and let's take a look at that again. So shell takes a string and gives us a create process. So what is a create process? The type of create process isn't extremely useful. Uh, we get a different view of it by looking at the info on it. But what it's actually used for is the function create process uh, takes a create process record and gives us something back in the IO monad. So if we look at the type of create process of shell, we can pass a string and presumably execute the given command, getting some results back, which we can ignore for now. We just want to get the side effects of the shell command. We don't have to worry about the results of it. And we can test this now directly in GHCI since GHCI allows us to execute actions in the IO monad directly from the prompt. So if we call create process shell, and we'll just use the shell command true since it's the simplest thing I can think of that really doesn't do anything and shouldn't fail. We should be able to run this and get nothing back. Now, if you haven't seen the dollar sign before, it's the same as writing like this, but it's a little bit more convenient to be able to write sort of pipelines of functions, sort of like a Unix pipeline. And if you're wondering what all this loading package output is here, that's just uh, GHC linking things before it runs the code. So let's take that and instead of a return here, we're going to just add a monad do block. Um, we don't want the output of this. We're going to create process shell, and then we'll use the command uh, we used before, which just runs uh, redo.do with the standard shell, and return nothing. 
So let's compile that with the same command we used before. Oops, we need system process. And now the redo program itself should be building itself, but we're not getting any output here. And you can see that each time we run it, the binary uh, timestamp isn't changing. So this is a bit puzzling, and it's these little puzzles that have really made me appreciate prototyping the simplest possible thing you can first so that you discover all these little problems uh, right away. Let's see if something about the process of compiling it as a Haskell file contributed to the problem. We're going to go ahead and first let's remove redo to see if it actually rebuilds and create process here of shell redo dot do. And you can see this time that something's actually happening here in GHCI. And after waiting a little bit, we're not going to get uh, anything back on the prompt. That's just the uh, last output we got from that. And now we have a redo file. So something's happening differently inside of GHCI than what's happening inside of the Haskell program um, that we compiled. And that may actually give you a hint as to what's happening already. I'll show you what the problem is when we go through using GHCI's debugger in the next video. But for the rest of this video, I'd like to go ahead and set up a GitHub repository for redo so that you can follow along uh, with the videos. So to start with, let's git init, and then we'll add redo.hs and redo.do. So let's go ahead and commit those now. The initial non-working version. And then we'll tag this as episode one. And I'm going to set up a GitHub repository. So let's create a repository here. We'll call it redo. TGB's uh, redo implementation in Haskell for Haskell from scratch video series. Uh, we'll make it public. And I'm not going to add a readme file yet. So let's create the repo. And we want the command to add the remote here. And then um, we want to push this here. So let's add my username and password. Oh, and it's probably a good thing that authentication failed because I want to use SSH instead of HTTPS anyway. So we use git at GitHub there. And let's try pushing again. And now we're using my SSH key instead of HTTPS auth. So let's check that everything looks okay inside of the repo. We have the two files and if we look at branches, there's just master and, and confusingly enough, there's no tag, which, nope. we do indeed have, but we need to push with the tags option to get those into the remote repository. We've just embarked on a journey to create a complete implementation of Redo in Haskell from scratch. 
And I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to see what the end result looks like and what kind of challenges we face along the way. Again, if you want to follow along with the source code as we go, this is the GitHub repository, and I will be creating a tag and pushing the changes to the source at the end of each video. If you want to be notified of when the next video is released, you can either subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can follow me on Twitter. The next video will be covering the interactive debugger inside of GHCI and seeing how we can use that to figure out what went wrong in this video with the implementation or the prototype of Redo. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.